couple weeks ago I decided to move some of the accounts that I have on a VPS server over to different, uh, a different server and different accounts. And now that I've got the majority of the accounts moved, uh, I've decided to move a couple of them back to the VPS. But when I moved them, what I did first was back up the accounts on the VPS uh, through my web host manager, downloaded those tar files to my computer, and then I deleted the accounts from the VPS. And that just kept it cleaner for me when I was changing DNS so I know when the domain names are resolving to the new account. So anyway, the result is the accounts that I moved to the new server, they don't exist anywhere anymore. So, for example, this ldoom.com, I don't have that on either one of my servers at this point. So the purpose of this video is to show you how to take a tar file, a backup file that you've made through Web Host Manager, cPanel, or some other method, and how to manually restore that back to a web server. So as I do this, I figured I'd go ahead and make a tutorial just to show, just to demonstrate how to do this. So first off, let me just log into my VPS and show you what I mean by a tar file or a backup file that you may have if you're using Web Host Manager or even cPanel that you may have downloaded to the, your computer. Uh, I'll log into my, to the root of my VPS. And I have my VPS set to backup files uh, on a daily and weekly basis. And you may have daily, weekly, monthly, or any combination. Uh, but anyway, when I go and look at my daily, I have all of my accounts on the VPS here with a backup file that's backed up daily. The one that I want to restore is this LDOOM account. Now, I already have it downloaded to my computer. But just to demonstrate here, uh, this tar here, I'm going to drag it down to my local computer. And what I'm using here to do this with is just a easy little FTP program called WinSCP. Here it is here, WinSCP. It's a nice, simple Windows-style program that I use instead of an FTP client. But obviously, you could do the same thing with your FTP client. Okay, now that I have it downloaded, that's my entire cPanel account downloaded in this tar file. I'm just going to put this in a folder just to uh, help with keeping the files organized. So the first thing I want to do in order to be able to restore this then back to my web server, you know, my objective is to get this ldoom.com account back up again, and this is a WordPress site, um, is to unzip or extract or untar this uh, tar file. So to do that, I use 7-Zip. I'm just going to right-click 7-Zip. 7-Zip is a free zip unzip program. Just Google it and download it if you don't have it. Very useful for lots of things. And I'm just going to extract this file here. When it extracts, you see it's still zipped up. It's still tarred. It went from a tar.gz to just a tar. So I'm going to right-click on the tar now and extract again. And there may be a one-step process for doing this, so if you know how to do it in one step, by all means do so. The objective is just to get it unzipped. Now I have my entire cPanel account unzipped. When I open that, then I see everything that's in cPanel that was in my cPanel account. Now I don't need a lot of this, but one additional thing I do need is to go through one more unzip and extract my home directory because it's still tarred up even inside here. So I'll right-click. 7-zip extract that here. And depending on the size, the number of files, and so forth that you have in your home directory, uh, this could take a few minutes to unzip. My site only contained one blog, and so it's not that big. Okay, now I have everything extracted that I need to extract. I'll just F5 here to reorganize them. So now that I have the last thing unzipped, I go down and I look for my public HTML directory. And there it is. Open it. And there's my blog, just as it was when I had it on the site. So now all I need to do is restore that. So I restore my, all of my WordPress directories and files. And then I also need to restore my database. If I look in the SQL directory, there's my database SQL. So to do that, now that I have my home directory or my uh, public HTML directory and my SQL, I'll go to my new site cPanel. Right now it's just empty with a blank index file log into cPanel, 
first thing I'll do is upload all of my files. So I'll go to my home directory, show, skip, I don't need to see that anymore. Uh, go to public HTML, and it's empty, has nothing in it except a blank index file. So I'm going to put all of my blog files here in root. And since I'm going to do that, I don't need that index file there anymore. So I'm going to delete that out. Uh, I'll go back now to my um, public HTML directory. And what I'm going to do is just, since I want to upload everything in public HTML, with the exception of that SIGBIN folder, it's empty. Uh, I don't need to upload it. I'm just merely going to highlight everything in this folder, Control A, right click on one of the highlighted items, and send to compress zip folder. So what I'm doing is just zipping up all of the contents of public HTML uh, right here. And it'll zip up and it'll have take the name of one of the files in here. So if you look now, there's license zip. Okay, so that zip file that's on my desktop new folder, LDOOM 9 public HTML, I want to upload that to my public HTML on the web server. So upload, browse, go to my desktop, new folder. LDOOM 9, public HTML, and zip. Now depending on your web host, you may be able to upload everything as a single zip, or if your web host limits you to certain uh, file sizes for upload, or if it times out, you may have to zip up portions of it and upload uh, portions of your site at a time instead of the entire thing. Again, mine's pretty small, only about 20 megabytes, so uploading it's not that bad. Okay, once it's uploaded completely, then you can go back to your file manager. Uh, we'll just reload the page, and we see the zip file. Select it, extract it, click Extract in Public HTML, close, and now there are all the files extracted in the root directory of my uh, Public HTML folder. I'm going to delete that zip file, and you want to make sure you do that, because if you don't, someone could possibly locate it through uh, Google search or just stumble across it, and they'd be able to download your entire WordPress uh, files. And the really bad thing about that is that your config file will be in there, and then if they get a hold of that, then they have your uh, username password for your database, and you could compromise your site. So. Don't ever leave any of those zip files sitting in your public HTML directory. Always delete them once you're done with them. So I have all the files for my WordPress site now uploaded. Uh, now the second thing I need to do is get my database created. Uh, so I'm going to create an empty database and then we'll upload the uh, SQL file to it. So we'll come here and go to My Databases. Uh, we'll create a database. I'll just call it LDOOM. Uh, we need to create a user for that database. We'll call it LDOOM as well, and then generate a password. Uh, when you generate your password, copy it. Say, I have copied this password, and then use it. And that's the password for the user, not the database, but the password for the user that you've created. And then click Create User. Make sure you keep that database password in a safe place because you're going to need it. If you lose it, then you'll have to come back and create another user. Uh, then the third thing to do here is once you've created the database and the user is add the user to the database. So click Add. I'll give all privileges, make changes. Okay. So now you can see here, uh, let me just go back and show you as a reference point where we are. In cPanel, we're at the MySQL databases. When you look here, we created a database called LDOOM, we created a user called LDOOM, and then we added that user to the database and gave all privileges. We have nothing in it at the moment, it's empty. Okay. If I go back now and look at my PHP my admin, I can see that database setting there, uh, but it's empty, it has no tables in it. Now one thing I'd suggest you do, whether you're creating a brand new blog or whether you're moving a blog or whatever, uh, is to make sure that you go here to operation and look at the encoding. It's probably going to be set to Latin Swedish. I always like to set mine 
to UTF-8 Unicode. So go in and, and uh, make sure you do that. And that's particularly important if you're using uh, different languages and so forth uh, on your site. So I have my database created. I have it set up the way that I want. Now all I need to do is import my SQL file into this database. So if I go back to my desktop, remember on the extracted cPanel backup, there's a directory there called MySQL. Click on that, and here you have the SQL file. It'll be the one in here that has your um, account name and ends with SQL. That's the one you want to import. It's probably going to be the largest database that you see there, the largest file that you see there, I should say. So that's what I want to import, that LDOOM9 underscore LDOOM SQL. So I'll come back here to cPanel. Um, PHP my admin import browse I'll find that in my SQL directory it's this one right here and I'll leave it UTF-8 and allow interrupted import click go uh, so now there are all my tables uh, that was in my old database if I click on it again I should be able to see my tables uh, now here's a good point, um, something that I didn't remember. When I originally created this database, I set the coalition up, coalition up to be UTF-8 general instead of Unicode. Uh, so I really want my database to match my tables. So I'll go back to operations and I'll set that instead of Unicode, I'll set it to general. And uh, you know the purpose of this tutorial is not to go into the differences. There are slight differences between those, but it's not going to matter to 99.9% .9 of people out there. Uh, so if you have a problem with encoding, uh, that's beyond this tutorial. Do some Googling. You can look up how to solve those issues. But I have my database itself set up with the same encoding as the tables in my database. That's a good thing. Uh, so now that I have that set up, uh, what I need to do then is go back to my file system go to my config file and I need to change anything here that's uh, changed when I created this new site. I may have a different database name, I may have a different username, I may have a different user password and you remember those that we set up uh, here on cPanel. Remember we set up in the database, we set the database name, it's going to be LDOOM underscore LDOOM, the user is LDOOM underscore LDOOM and the password is what we copied when we created that password. So here I need to make sure that matches in this config file. So I'm going to edit the config file and go down and make sure those match. My old one was LDOOM9 for the actual uh, account name. It's LDOOM now. Uh, the database is LDOOM. That's good. It's LDOOM, LDOOM for the user. That's good. And the password now is different. So I need to put that new password in. That's the user database user password that we copied. Uh, just go down, make sure that your uh, table prefix is the same as what's in uh, the new one it should be if you imported your table. And it might be a good time here, although it's not absolutely necessary, to change these keys. So I'm going to go to this site here. I'm just going to copy that, open a new tab, paste in that web address, hit enter. And then just because I'm superstitious, I'm going to refresh the page a couple times to make sure I have some good random keys here. Copy those keys. Control C. Go back. And then take these keys. Just start with the define and end with the last line there. Delete those out and paste in a new set of security keys. And then save this. Uh, now I should have everything set up so that my site works the way that it should. So let's see. If I go to LDOOM.com, <clears throat> now instead of a blank index page, I have my site back online just like it was. It's just a simple blog. I should be able to go here now and log in. And it might be a good idea to log in. Your username password should be the same as it was originally.
everything here should be the same. I haven't I haven't upgraded this one in a while, so uh, I might need to go in and do some updates to the uh, WordPress and to the plugins and so forth. Everything should work the way that it did uh, originally. So hopefully this will help you, uh, even if you don't have a situation where you have a zip file and you need to upload a blog, uh, restore your blog. Hopefully it'll help give you some ideas about how to do that if you're moving between sites. Now, one thing here that made it simple for me is that I didn't change the URL. The site, the URL was ldoom.com on the old site that I'd archived, and I'm restoring it back to ldoom.com. So I don't have to go in and change any uh, database uh, links and so forth. If you're moving a site from one domain name and you're changing the domain name, then there's another step you need to go through in there to change the uh, actual URL references in the database. I have other tutorials on my blog, edgechalk.org, to show you how to do that. So uh, just go look at it and search, and, and you'll see how to do it if you're changing your domain name.